Rome's story begins with the legendary tale of its founders, Romulus and Remus. According to myth, these twin brothers were the sons of Mars, the god of war, and a vestal virgin. Abandoned and raised by a she-wolf, they eventually decided to build a city on the banks of the Tiber River. After a disagreement, Romulus killed Remus and became the first king of Rome, which was founded in 753 BCE. The Roman kingdom, ruled by kings, lasted for more than two centuries. However, in 509 BCE, the Romans revolted against the last king, Tarquin the Proud, and established a new form of government, the Roman Republic. This political system was characterized by the separation of powers and checks and balances. The most important positions were held by two consuls, elected annually by the citizens. They were advised by the Senate, a powerful body composed mainly of aristocratic patricians. During the early years of the Roman Republic, the power struggle between the patricians and plebeians continued. The patricians, members of the aristocracy, held most of the political power, while the plebeians, who were farmers, laborers, and merchants, sought greater representation and protection of their rights. This struggle, known as the Conflict of the Orders, took place between the 5th and 3rd centuries BCE. The plebeians employed various tactics, such as secessions and strikes, to pressure the patricians into making concessions. As a result, the plebeians gained significant political advancements, such as the establishment of the Tribune of the Plebs, an office that gave them a voice in the Roman government, and the right to intermarry with patricians. A key milestone in this struggle was the creation of the Twelve Tables in 450 BCE. This set of laws, inscribed on bronze tablets, marked the first time that Roman law was written down and made publicly accessible. It provided a legal framework that applied to both patricians and plebeians, ensuring a more equitable and transparent system of justice. As the Roman Republic grew stronger, it embarked on a series of conquests and wars that would ultimately make it a dominant power in Italy and the Mediterranean. This period of Roman expansion started in the early 4th century BCE and lasted until the 2nd century BCE. First, the Romans focused on consolidating their control over the Italian peninsula. They fought several conflicts against neighboring tribes and city-states, such as the Samnite Wars between 343 and 290 BCE. These wars resulted in Roman control over central and southern Italy. The Pyrrhic War, fought against the Greek general Pyrrhus of the Greek kingdom of Epirus between 280 and 275 BCE, marked the beginning of Rome's rise to power in the Mediterranean region. The most significant conflicts during this period of expansion were the Punic Wars, a series of three wars fought against the powerful city-state of Carthage between 264 and 146 BCE. The First Punic War saw Rome and Carthage clash over control of Sicily, ultimately resulting in a Roman victory. This war established Rome as a major naval power. The Second Punic War is perhaps the most famous of the three, as it featured the brilliant Carthaginian general Hannibal. He famously crossed the Alps with his army, including war elephants, and won several major battles against Rome. However, Rome ultimately emerged victorious after a long and costly war, thanks in part to the strategic genius of the Roman general Scipio Africanus. The Third Punic War marked the end of Carthage as a major power. After a three-year siege, the Romans captured the city, destroyed it, and enslaved its inhabitants. Through these wars and conquests, Rome gained control over much of the Mediterranean world, from the Iberian Peninsula to the Greek East. However, this rapid expansion also brought with it new challenges, leading to social and political turmoil within the Republic. The rapid acquisition of new territories and wealth led to increasing income inequality and the concentration of land in the hands of a few wealthy individuals. This situation displaced many small farmers, who flocked to Rome and other cities in search of work, leading to urban overcrowding and social unrest. In response to these issues, two brothers, Tiberius and Gaius Gracchus, emerged as champions of the common people. As tribunes of the plebs, they attempted to implement land reforms to redistribute wealth and provide support for the urban poor. 
However, the Gracchi brothers faced staunch opposition from the conservative senatorial class, leading to their untimely deaths. Tiberius in 133 BCE and Gaius in 121 BCE. Their attempts at reform, though unsuccessful, marked the beginning of a period of social and political upheaval in the Republic. During this tumultuous time, a military leader named Gaius Marius came to prominence. Elected consul in 107 BCE, Marius reformed the Roman army by opening its ranks to the urban poor, who previously had been excluded due to property requirements. In exchange for their service, these new soldiers were promised land and other rewards, making them loyal to their generals rather than the Republic itself. This change, known as the Marian Reforms, set the stage for the rise of powerful military figures who would challenge the traditional authority of the Senate. The Social War, 91, 88 BCE, further exacerbated Rome's internal strife. This conflict, fought between Rome and its Italian allies, was sparked by Rome's refusal to grant its allies Roman citizenship. Although Rome ultimately emerged victorious, the war exposed the fragility of the Republic and its institutions. The rivalry between Gaius Marius and his former ally Lucius Cornelius Sulla eventually led to a series of civil wars. Sulla, a conservative general, marched on Rome in 88 BCE, becoming the first Roman general to do so. After a bloody conflict, Sulla emerged victorious and established himself as a dictator, carrying out a series of proscriptions and purges against his enemies. Sulla's dictatorship marked a significant shift in the Roman Republic's political landscape, as it introduced widespread killings as a tool to be used in Roman politics. Sulla's heavy-handed dictatorship would inspire others to follow his example. Among these individuals were Pompey the Great, Julius Caesar, and Marcus Licinius Crassus, who together formed the First Triumvirate in 60 BCE. This informal alliance allowed them to circumvent the Senate's authority and pursue their own interests. Julius Caesar, a charismatic and ambitious general, gained significant power and prestige after his conquest of Gaul during the Gallic Wars. Caesar's military success and growing popularity alarmed the Senate and his rival, Pompey. In 49 BCE, Caesar famously crossed the Rubicon River with his legions, sparking a civil war against Pompey and the Senate. Caesar emerged victorious, and by 45 BCE, he had effectively become the sole ruler of Rome, amassing powers traditionally reserved for the Republic's institutions. The Senate, fearing the loss of its authority, conspired to assassinate Caesar on the Ides of March in 44 BCE. Key figures in the plot included Brutus and Cassius, both former supporters of Caesar. The assassination plunged Rome into another civil war, as the power vacuum left by Caesar's death led to a struggle for control of the Republic. In response to Caesar's assassination, the Second Triumvirate was formed in 43 BCE, composed of Octavian, Caesar's adopted son and heir, Mark Antony, Caesar's loyal general, and Lepidus, a former ally of Caesar. The first order of business for the Second Triumvirate was to defeat Caesar's assassins, Brutus and Cassius. In the Battle of Philippi in 42 BCE, Octavian and Mark Antony's forces emerged victorious, solidifying their control over the Republic. Following their victory, the Triumvirate divided the Roman territories among themselves. Octavian controlled the West, Antony the East, and Lepidus Africa. The alliance between Octavian and Mark Antony gradually deteriorated due to political and personal differences. Mark Antony's affair with Cleopatra, the Egyptian queen, strained his relationship with Octavian, who saw this as a threat to Roman interests. Propaganda campaigns fueled the rivalry, with Octavian portraying Antony as a traitor who had abandoned Rome for Cleopatra and the exotic East. In 31 BCE, the conflict between Octavian and Mark Antony came to a head in the Battle of Actium. Octavian's naval forces, commanded by his close friend and general Agrippa, defeated Antony and Cleopatra's fleet in a decisive engagement off the coast of Greece. Following their defeat, Antony and Cleopatra fled to Egypt, where they committed suicide in 30 BCE. With his rivals eliminated, Octavian became the uncontested ruler of Rome. In 27 BCE, the Senate granted him the titles Princeps and Augustus, 
signifying his unique and unparalleled status. He had become the first Roman emperor. Though Augustus maintained the appearance of the Republic's institutions, he held supreme power, marking the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire.